MITRE ATT&CK is a comprehensive framework that categorizes and describes the tactics, techniques, and procedures, or TTPs, used by cyber adversaries during various stages of a cyber attack. Consider it to be like a giant bucket of data, or a knowledge base, really, to refer to to get a sense of how you can better defend against certain TTPs. And with that, let's open up Google and navigate to the MITRE ATT&CK website. It's located at attack.mitre.org, and we can find it through a quick Google search if we're not sure. Cool, so now as you can see by loading the website, this framework lists out all of the various TTPs per stage of what they consider to be the full extent of an attack lifecycle. As such, this is just a much more zoomed in view, so you can really pinpoint the specific areas of where you want to disable a threat actor from gaining leverage on your company. And MITRE ATT&CK isn't just associated with enterprise networks. If we select the matrices tab at the top and select enterprise, you can see that this is the enterprise view, which we see on the main page, but they also have mobile and ICS for industrial control systems like you would experience with power grids and other various industrial operations or critical infrastructure. We can reference all of the individual tactics, techniques, and mitigations at the top. So let's start with enterprise tactics and let's pull up the APT41 report now so we can do a little comparison and contrast and get more information on some of those TTPs we saw mentioned later on in this report on page 49. And then let's start with spear phishing so we can understand more about what that encompasses. So we'll go to the initial access area, scroll through this list and see if we can match up the spear phishing attachment, which is actually a sub technique of phishing. So we'll select that now and then examine what it has to say. And we're probably familiar with what spear phishing is at this point, but if we weren't sure, because there are a lot of different techniques, we could find a full description here. And so in this case, we can see that the reliance on user execution is typically one of the major factors that allow spear phishing to be so successful, and then some sample file types and executables that we should be aware of. And additionally, what's great is if we're not sure about what this might look like, we can look at some actual examples or procedure examples as they're called. We can select maybe that little one as the reference cited document. And over here, we can see a full walkthrough of how this particular threat actor was utilizing a spear phishing attachment to attack an organization. So that can give us an idea and we can go through a bunch of these if we want to really pinpoint specifically how one of these techniques really work. And now scrolling down even further, we can see the mitigation section. And this is really helpful. This is where MITRE starts to really help an organization. We can get some specific mitigation strategies to prevent this technique from occurring. So for example, by restricting web-based content with some of these file extensions over here and user training, that would be helpful. That's a good mitigation strategy. And what's also great is we have detections involved with each of the techniques. So it's one thing to mitigate it, but how do we detect it if it ever does occur? Well, we can see over here, we can monitor for file creation events from emails and monitor the application log events for anything related to email header spoofing. That's awesome. So now we have something to work with that could have taken a lot of time to research documentation. They've done the heavy lifting for us as a really good starting point for us to dig into more if it's relative and makes sense and we can apply it. Let's take a look at another one now under the execution attack lifecycle phase. We'll read more into PowerShell. That might be a good one for us to examine. So we can hop back inside of the framework here and then drill down a little bit further how PowerShell can be utilized in the execution phase of the attack lifecycle. So let's click on that link over there. It's underneath command and scripting interpreter as a sub technique. And so we can see that PowerShell can be utilized with various commandlets such as start process or invoke command and that can run an executable. So that gives us a good indicator of what we might want to be looking for. Now let's do a scroll down and look at some of the mitigation and detections. For mitigating strategies, we can maybe disable or remove the program entirely. Maybe not everyone should be running PowerShell. Maybe also execution prevention and privilege account management. So perhaps we don't need to disable PowerShell outright. Maybe we just need to segregate it so that only administrators can use it. So these are some good mitigation steps for us to consider. And then what about detections? Well, what's really good here is there are some key detection events that we can be looking for. And this is detection pseudocode. This is not the specific exact code you should be looking for. This is just a suggested event that you might want to inspect and see how it applies to the way that your organization monitors events and alerts. Sort of like how we were using ELK to perform log analytics. Well, you might be using a different tool and you might be ingesting logs very differently and your logs might look different as a result. However, you should generally be looking for some type of event of remote 
PowerShell sessions being created, modules being loaded, and script execution taking place in the way that your organization can monitor it. Finally, let's take a look at another one here of startup items. So let's go inspect how startup items can be utilized in the persistence stage of the attack lifecycle to compromise an organization. So here we can see that startup entries can permit a form of persistence to be established even after system reboot. And it can be utilized by the default run keys that exist in the registry and can live on even inside of user startup folders. So really, these are the areas for us to look at. But let's scroll down and take a look at some of the detection and mitigation techniques as well. So scrolling down, this one's a little bit different. You see, there's more complexities involved here. So there may not be specific mitigations for something like this. And so you have to pause and maybe do a little bit of research and consider why. And when we're dealing with modifications of the registry or user startup folders and such as we saw, there's a variety of ways. There are many ways that that could occur. So there's really no one single mitigation strategy against it. However, the detection is a different story because what we can't mitigate, we can detect and respond to. So in this case, we can see process creation as a detection strategy. And if that's the case, if something is targeting those areas within process creation, that's what we need to be looking out for. Or if we see something modifying the Windows registry for a key creation, key value pairs changing, again, we need to monitor and detect for those. So you can see, right, this is a really powerful knowledge base. It's got just about everything we need to get an understanding. So now let's look at one more thing that MITRE ATT&CK offers, and it's called the Navigator. So you see on this homepage, we can click and look at all these different TTPs per attack lifecycle stage, but they have this tool called the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator. And if we go to Resources and then select their related projects, we can see that they have an ATT&CK Navigator GitHub repository. And the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator is a graphical tool that allows cybersecurity professionals to explore, visualize and track how specific attack techniques can be executed and mitigated using the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And in their GitHub page, you can find a link to a live instance to interact with the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator. So let's go ahead and click on that now and let's walk through it. In order to use it, we need to create layers and we need to create a new layer and select Enterprise. That's what we were just working with. And once we do, you can see that it'll open up that same view that we had in the main web page, except this time we can go and click on these individual TTPs and then provide some color coding for them to get a visual mapping about what we need to focus our resources on. So let's go and give spear phishing a color over here. Choose anything you'd like. I'm just gonna go with yellow. So now we can get a visual that yes, we need to focus on phishing, spear phishing attachments because that's a play by APT41 for initial access. And let's do the same with what we did for PowerShell and also startup entries, and then take a look and see what that looks like. And I'm just going to speed up the recording a little bit right here. Feel free to pause and take your time with this and click on the little bucket at the top right and select what you prefer. Now, this is helpful. We have a good visual, but we can do even more. Remember, MITRE ATT&CK is a big knowledge base. Let's create another layer and we'll make another enterprise one. And this time, Let's just give this a name by selecting layer one at the top and call this APT41. Now we can select that little magnifying lens there at the top. And then we can use this little drop down menu over here to look for specific techniques, threat groups, software. And in fact, we could actually specify just for APT41 by finding them inside of the threat group list over here and then select all of their TTPs at once. And then we can go to that little bucket again and paint all of them a color. And just like that, we have all of the various TTPs that APT41 is known to utilize based on all of the knowledge base articles and information that MITRE ATT&CK has been able to categorize. Now that's super cool. If you wanted to get a visual representation of all of the areas you need to specify your resources on to tighten up and defend against, here you go. And this is something you can give to a non-technical reader and give them a nice visual overview of where we need to dedicate our resources. So I hope you can see just how powerful the MITRE ATT&CK framework really is. Let's say, for example, that you do indeed have APT41 targeting you. Well, you've now read a Threat Act report and you got a bit of the lay of the land about what they do, their history, and using MITRE, you've been able to identify a variety of mitigation and detection strategies against three of their more commonly known tactics, techniques, and procedures against organizations like you 
who could be their target. 